It's the Celebrity Master Chef Finals. It's now within grasp, and I've got to do it. These celebrities are all passionate about food. I want to do well, I want to be the best. We're looking for that exceptional cooking stuff. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. I want to be the MasterChef champion, and I'm going to do everything in my power to be it. The final is almost upon them. But before then, Liz, Mark and Andy will be pushed to the limits of their culinary skills. They fly into the heart of Africa. We should be serving now. Just get it out, OK? Oh, for God's sake. I can't do this. Then they return to London to cook at Michelin standards for some of the best chefs in the country. I completely and utterly want to cry. Oh. It's ridiculous. I've never seen anything like this. You haven't seen a chef come running out of here about a minute ago? Yeah. Damn. The pressure from day one has been immense and it's got tougher and tougher. The closer you get to the final day, you, know, you do want it more and more. You do want to win. I've worked hard and I think I've consistently delivered. For me, it's all about John and Greg saying the master chef is Andy. All three of us want it so badly, so it's going to be a really tough final. I think this will probably be your toughest final yet. Liz, Mark and Andy have flown over 6,000 miles into the heart of the South African bush. <laughs> Nestled amongst the Lobombo Mountains on the Mozambique border lies Singita, one of the world's most exclusive safari lodges. Thank you very much. Oh, my God! <laughs> this place is well-renowned. We brought them out here to raise the standard of their cooking. Consistently voted one of the world's best resorts, guests pay up to £1,500 a night to stay here. Our contestants have to achieve, they have to raise their level. This is an award-winning hotel with a cuisine to match. Tonight, the celebrities will cook in its restaurant. The food equals the best cuisine found in London, Paris or New York. Two lamb, both well done, and one guinea fowl. Three minutes. Head chef Clinton Drake is the man responsible for maintaining its exceptional standards. We can't afford to send out stuff that's not going to be of the quality that our guests are used to. It really needs to be top class. But before Clinton will allow the celebrities to cook dinner in his restaurant, he wants to test their capabilities. It's early morning, and they've been dropped off in the middle of the bush. I don't think my travel insurance covers me, Chloe, if you're in the bush. Armed rangers will be on hand to ensure their safety. But if we could just walk at an angle, because if, if yeah. something charges and you're all the way around me, I can't fire my rifle, because if you start running, yeah. the animal follows you and I can't shoot. Right. If we happen to be in a situation, and uh, we have to take a decision, who's going to shoot first? OK. Yeah. Cool. Without electricity, their kitchen is only barrel barbecues and basic gas burners. They have just two hours to prepare an exquisite three-course lunch for eight of the lodge's hard-working rangers. This is taking Celebrity MasterChef to a completely different level. We've got them out in the bush, but they're not doing a picnic. They are doing restaurant standard food. To top it off, they'll be using unfamiliar local ingredients. Oh. Salt, 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 salt. Oh, for God's sake. Andy's starter involves a South African fish called snook, served in roti bread with tomato salsa, mango chutney and a shoot salad. This is the bush. 
In previous rounds, Andy's shown technical brilliance. I can imagine eating this in a restaurant. I'm not sure I'd grumble in the slightest. Clever boy. Put the meat on the top with the bones facing away from us. Okay. The beans go on this side, all in a line. But his focus on presentation has led him to forget what's important. What you've done here, I feel, is you've sacrificed flavour for technique. He is technically brilliant. As long as he believes that he's technically brilliant, he will pull it off. But he's just got to taste, taste, taste and taste. I once bought a disposable barbecue. That was, like, three years ago. I've never cooked outside since. Oh, this is disastrous. Oh, no, I'll just do it. Andy, we are in the middle of the African bush. It is about 32 degrees, and now you're doing high-end dining. Who'd have thought that you could cook in the bush where I can just look up and see a hippopotamus? You know, and at the end of it, I'll be a better cook and I could be master chef. Meanwhile, the rangers are tracking game. In less than two hours, Clinton expects them to serve a three-course lunch that matches Singita's world-class standards. Mark is preparing the main course. Grilled springbok and crayfish tail, served with a crayfish cannelloni and peri-peri sauce. I don't know what a springbok looks like yet. It's, uh, it's a bit like a gazelle with horns. I'm used to seeing them on the, the jerseys of the rugby team. Um, so it'll give me great pleasure to cook a few. Mark is a strong and passionate cook. That, for me, is seriously impressive. Thank you. But he can be disorganised, and under pressure, he can crack. Do what you like. Just get that sauce made. I don't care. You make your own sauce. Mark has got the poshest surf and turf you'll ever see in your life. As long as he keeps his kitchen in order and sees what he has to do, he'll be brilliant. I'm very nervous. I feel under pressure. Um, again, alien equipment, the heat. There's a breeze coming off this river, but it is hot. I want to see who can hold their nerve when we get a few crocs floating past. Didn't expect this today, did you? No. I thought we'd be doing a, a barbie in the bush funnily enough, but not to this standard. If I get it out on time and if the dish comes up to the standards required, I will be so pleased and proud, really proud. Does that then make you our champion? Uh, I hope so. I'm going to give it a damn good try, put it that way. Pasta in the bush. Every challenge we've been set has been tough, but this is just ridiculous. <laughs> I've never made fresh pasta in my life. Prepare to tempt your pasta looking exceptional. Silky, smooth, top class. Cheers, buddy. Right, guys, you've only got about 45 minutes left to go, so step it up. Oh, for God's sake, put this machine. Anyone up the lighter? Liz is serving floating poached meringues in creme anglaise and a passion fruit coulis, garnished with sugar shards. The shards are made by boiling sugar to exactly the right temperature. Are you sure you took it 166 degrees? Huh? Yes, I yeah. did. Yes, most definitely. Throughout the competition, Liz is impressed with an innate natural ability. For somebody who, not so long ago, has never roasted a chicken, if I had one, I'd take my hat off to you. <laughs> But she doesn't always get it right. The curious thing is the stuff that should be easy, she's got wrong. Liz has got a classic dish, and it's about building her repertoire. But she has to concentrate, and it must be perfect. I would much rather have the starter or the main, and that's probably why I've got this, I suppose, but I will rise to the challenge. <laughs> the sugar must now be left in the cool box to set. Andy, yeah. could you lift your tush, please? Okay. Liz, you're cooking a classic dessert in this environment with this equipment. I'm surprised that um, you can be almost, to be honest, to be expected to cook gourmet food. We are getting near the final. You master this, are you master chef? Oh, please, God. But you know what? I suppose it doesn't matter how much experience you have, as long as it comes out amazing, then you're good, aren't you? Good. 
Meanwhile, the rangers begin their journey back for lunch. If the celebrities are to prove themselves to Clinton, the food must be served on time to his high standards. We are up against it now. And obviously, when you're the person doing the starters, it's always the hardest thing, because you're the first up. So, will I make it? Fingers crossed. But Andy still has to finish his tomato salsa, his mango chutney, and cook his roti bread. We've only got 20 minutes left before we have to start serving starters. And I think uh, if we get this out in 20 minutes, it's going to be a miracle, to be honest with you. And Clinton has spotted a problem. Liz has got her temperatures wrong. Despite being in the cool box, the sugar hasn't set. Your, um, your sugar hasn't really set properly. I don't think you took it to the right temperature. 166 up here, 166 up here. There. That's Fahrenheit, 166 Celsius. Sorry. Sugar, that's my fault. Um, shall I put some more on? Yeah, you're gonna need okay. to. Liz has to start the sugar shards all over again. If you say degrees, that could mean Fahrenheit or, or Celsius, couldn't it? Wait, well, yeah, it could do. Really, really, really <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it's one or the other, has to be. You could do one thing wrong, and it, it knocks me for six. Honestly, it really does. <laughs> Andy will be first to serve. He's running late. You still have to cook your chutney. So I think we, uh, we really need to start rocking and rolling now. Put your rotties down. And let's get that chutney on the go. You've got nine. Let's, let's sort it out. A little bit behind, but it's taken longer than I thought. What do you actually think you've got to do? I've got to cook the rosties, yeah. put the mango chutney in a thing like this. Right. How long do you think it's going to really take? Oh, ten minutes. You're going to have to be cooking on that late, otherwise you're just not going to get done. OK. Oh, God! We should be serving now. We'll just get it out, OK? I'm exceptionally worried about it. We might have to skip a course. Um, right, you give me that. Give me that, I'll do it. I'll do it. Give me that time. John and Clinton have to step in. Andy, are we going? Yeah, I'm ready yeah. to go. Yeah. Well, let's go. Oh my giddy aunt, and it was late, but hopefully they'll taste it and think the taste was perfect. And as long as they do, then I'll be happy. Andy's starter of small snook wrapped in roti bread with mango chutney, salsa, and a shoot salad is finally served. Bon appetit. Enjoy, guys. Enjoy. <laughs> Everything for me was perfect. The chutney is fabulous. I haven't tasted a chutney like that in a while. Yeah, we've been out since five o'clock this morning looking for game, and uh, this lunch is certainly well deserved. And his timing was a bit short. You know, he was he was really off the mark there. But uh, at the end of it, it, it it tasted damn good. That's for sure. They're starting to clear the starters, so you need to be ready in about in about five minutes. Okay. Mark's up next. His peri peri sauce is made. His cannelloni is ready, and he's cooking the springbok. We need to, we need to get it on the plate now. OK. But his main course must look good, and with just minutes to serve, the pressure starts to show. Cannelloni, cannelloni, cannelloni. Yeah. The heat is absolutely intense. I don't... Stressed. 
Michael, what do you got? Uh, oh, my hand's gone. Mark, no, just, just, just relax. Just try to do one thing at a time, so yeah. you pay, pay, you pay, pay. The meat's looking spot on, yeah? Hope it uh, tastes as good as it looks. Service, please. Uh, my brain's mush. Mark's dish of grilled springbok and crayfish tail on a crayfish cannelloni with piri piri sauce is served on time. You've got to come up to the mark, so if I don't come up to the mark, I don't belong in the final, I don't, be, don't deserve to win. It's a very good piri piri sauce. Crayfish is also excellent. Is it good? Lovely. Springbok is my absolute favourite and Awesome flavour, very good meal. I like it, yeah. I feel like I can have more. <laughs> <laughs> his pasta has turned out absolutely beautifully. He's really done that well. A couple of gold stars on his, on his belt, yeah. It leaves Liz with minutes to make her meringues. With her egg whites and sugar at the right consistency, Liz must now make perfect quenelles. So scared about this. And then poach them in milk without them losing their shape. Doing posh puddings in the bush. Yeah, everything looks perfect. But one element of her dish will be missing if her second attempt at sugar shards doesn't work. Rangers make of Liz's floating poached meringues in creme anglaise with passion fruit coulis and sugar shards. I'm proud of myself because I never thought I'd be able to make normal meringues, let alone poached meringues. Very, very substantial dessert, absolutely perfect. Uh, I thought that was a highlight of the meal for me today, which was exceptional. So we enjoy that. No special here in the bush next to the water. If someone's never been been out here before, taken out of their comfort zone into an area like this, that they can, they can do this, it's very good. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed your lunch. I'm amazed you managed to whip three incredible courses like that up in the middle of the bush. Well done, that was awesome. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you very much. They may have impressed the rangers, but have they proved to Clinton they're good enough to cook in his restaurant? What did you think about guys, Clinton? It was impressive. Considering that, they, that they're amateurs, that they've never worked in professional kitchens before, I thought that was amazing. Are you confident about the three of them in your own kitchen? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, but, uh, but I, think, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be a good challenge for them. You know, we'll see. It is absolutely incredible that our three celebrities did what they did today with that equipment. Brilliant job, great food, unbelievable. This is one of the most exclusive game reserves in the world. Those customers tonight are expecting the absolute best. And we've got our three celebrity finalists in there. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Right, guys, you're in the kitchen now, cooking for my guests. So everything we have to send out tonight is, it needs, needs to be top, top class. Um, it's, it's not going to go past the pass unless it's, it's absolutely spot on. It's exceptionally important that we get this right. You know, we, we can't have any, any comebacks or anybody unhappy with the food. We're just too high end for that, for that sort of mistake. Pull your plate out when it's hot. This evening, each celebrity will be responsible for one main course from the restaurant's menu. 
Mark is in charge of cutlet and braised neck of lamb, served with four types of vegetables, mash and a jus. Get yourself organised in service and you're going to be fine. Yes, 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 yes. They won't accept anything less than perfection here, so we're under the cosh again. Andy will be serving breast and leg of guinea fowl with a mushroom stuffing, vegetables and gravy. I'm going to do Clinton Proud. Liz will be cooking pork cutlet with pork belly ravioli, a honey and mustard sauce and a vegetable salad. The key is don't overcook the pork. That's the biggest thing. Okay, You overcook it, it's going to be dry. People are going to complain. I'm not going to be happy chappy. All right? With four hours until service, there's just enough time to prep each dish from scratch. That's mine! But there's a problem. Andy's having a reaction to his anti-malarial tablets. Okay, Sadly, Andy's had to take some time out. He looks really, really ill. He can hardly stand up properly. So, obviously, you know, he's not going to do the prep. I can't do this. My legs literally feel like jelly and I'm shivering. If I, if I can't complete this task today, I'll be so upset. I'll be more upset than losing because it will mean I lost out because of being ill, which is just rubbish. Mark and Liz have to continue regardless. The heat is ridiculous. This is the hottest kitchen I've ever worked in. Clinton at hot, is it? About in here now. I think it's about 45 degrees at the moment. See? <laughs> it's hot. How's Andy, do you know? If he's not well, he won't be able to stand this heat because it's unbearable. Andy's dish can't be taken off the menu, so Clinton has to call for backup. Hi, it's a big oven. Well, I was busy having a nap. At about half past four, I got a phone call saying there is no Andy. Clinton's boys have been doing all his prepping, so I hope he feels better because he's got away. He's got away rather lightly. In less than half an hour, this world-class restaurant will open. With an all clear from the doctor, Andy must decide whether he's joining Mark and Liz for evening service in the kitchen. I've come all this way and worked this hard. So I'm going to get in there and just try my hardest. Being ill has knocked me now, not my confidence. So I hope they take that into consideration. Evening, Andy. How are you feeling? I've had better days, yeah, but yeah. I want to give it a go. You didn't know, get a manage tonight? I've got to try. Yeah. You can only try. Wow, how beautiful is this? And it's about to start. The place is starting to fill up. These guys are in for an extraordinary night. It's 48 degrees in that kitchen. If they do this, and they do this well, they all deserve the title. The celebrities must deliver. If the food's not cooked to the way we like it, it's not going out the kitchen. There's just no way. So uh, they really need to come to the party now. Yeah, it's going to be their, their big challenge. Are you guys ready? Yeah, oh, yeah. loads of rock, chef. Yeah? yeah? Fantastic. OK, first orders are coming in. Let's get to your stations. Thank sort you. yourselves out. Yeah, you Let's go. Hey, guys. Two guinea fowl, one lamb well done, one pork. Yes, Thanks. chef. Yes, chef. You get that? You get that? Yes. Just listen carefully to what I say and yeah, just exactly. respond with yes, chef. Yes, sir. Okay, just so I know what's going on. Andy's off to a shaky start. I'm still feeling pretty awful, but I've got to get through it. Andy had serious timing issues this morning. He cannot have timing issues tonight. It will mess up the whole kitchen. Okay, Andy, how long on two guinea fowl, please? Four minutes. Four minutes? But it was five minutes, four minutes ago. Your timing's a little out. The other guys are relying on you to keep your time straight, so, OK. Guys, you've got four minutes, yeah, on, on one lamb and uh, one pork. I'm nearly ready, though, Chef. I know you're just going to have to hold it back, I'm afraid. Hold it back. Oh, my God. He slowed me down. He's just not concentrating at the moment. And he just needs to up his game a little bit. 
I need to get in front to go. I need to go now. Okay, chef. Very, very nice. <laughs> Looking fine, Liz. Good job. Thank you. Andy, let's rock and roll, please. Okay, boss. You're slowing me up here, man. Andy, that looks good. Thank you. Thank you, chef. I think at La Bomba we're trying to achieve Michelin two, three star food. It really needs to be top, top, top. But how will the food go down with the diners? Apparently the, the pork was exceptionally succulent, so congratulations. Wicked, brilliant, yeah. It's a good job. This has been great and she's really impressed me. She surprised me. It's the middle of service. As the temperature pushes 50 degrees, there's a rush of orders for Mark's lamb. Two lamb, both well done. Three minutes, I want this food, okay? Yes, chef. Right, uh, Coming out. I've never worked in heat like it. It's beyond comprehension. You've got to be here to believe it. Ah, you it's a tough working environment. The heat in the kitchen is really having an impact. And he's starting to get a little bit stressed out now. Mark has to just be calm. If he starts to panic, it, it will go very, very wrong. Mark, what? the face is like gone like that and it's bright red. Fine. Yeah, it's like Hey, Mark, we need to push on this lamp here. The guests are waiting. Excuse me, guys. Yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> oh. Mark? Best land I've ever had in my life. Well done. What can I tell you? It's all my day's work here. Get out of my kitchen already. I still feel not too good, but adrenaline is keeping me going, basically. Despite feeling weak, Andy's finally starting to deliver on time. How long are we all saying? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. They've been calling out times to each other, organising themselves. It's been phenomenal. I didn't think it was going to go like this at all. I thought it was going to be chaos. Okay, that looks good, thank you. Okay, guys, that's it. The service is finished. Well done. Congratulations. It's fantastic that you've been able to, to make it through tonight. And that you push through your feeling sick. I think it's, it's great. I didn't want to let you down. Yeah. Thank you. It's oh, been fantastic. Thank Everything's you. been great. Thank you. Come sit down, buddy. Come sit down. Come sit down there. <clears throat> I've got some water. It's just the heat in the place. The heat in there is just unbearable. It's unreal. I've never, ever, ever, in all the kitchens we've cooked in in London, none of them have been like this. Well done. Oh. oh my God. Well done, guys. Well done, boss. Bear in mind these guys are not chefs. They are celebrities back in England. How impressive is that? I've been very impressed. I'm surprised. Yeah. Mark did exceptionally well. Organisationally, uh, he was he was spot on. And he, I'm not sure whether it had to do with his being ill, but he wasn't keeping up with the timing of the of the other contestants. But all in all, he, he did he did an okay job. I think Liz did really really well tonight. She's certainly competing with the two boys. Who has got the real potential? Who's got the real touch? It's a really tough question to answer. Um, there's a. It's a it's a very close call. There's uh, they've all got strengths. They've all got weaknesses. But I think after tonight's performance, I would say that Mark would be my would be my favourite. Whoa, 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 that froze the cat amongst the pigeons. An extraordinary day. All three of them have worked really, really, really hard. And to turn out food to that quality and that standard, being amateurs, is nothing short of miraculous. Liz, we recognised a good touch in her. Today, the girl really rose to the challenge and just did amazing. I'm 
really want this title because I'm working so hard and I am learning so much and don't people become chefs from having natural talent? Then can't I take it all away? You can see on Andy's face that he is absolutely gutted. He is not well, that's not his fault, but it is a competition. He has to stay in it because he is technically brilliant. We know he's technically brilliant. I'm over the moon that I managed to cook today because I was so ill. Part of me is on top of the world. I'm literally having an emotional rush now. And part of me is, please get me into a bed so I can just lie there and go to sleep. Mark has really done himself proud today and may have inched himself even nearer to that MasterChef title. The feelings of pride and, uh, and euphoria, it's just immense. It, I never expected to get so much in this competition. Amazing. I don't know which way this is going, and we are running out of time in which to decide who our MasterChef champion is going to be. Thirty-six hours later, back in London, and the celebrities are about to face their toughest challenge yet. The Barclay Hotel is home of two Michelin star restaurant Petrus. In exactly five hours, Liz, Mark and Andy will have to serve five of the country's most respected Michelin star chefs. They will be supervised by Marcus Waring. As one of Britain's top chefs, his standards are intimidating. I actually cry with how scared I am. I am rigid with fear. This is a competition. We've got to cook for our lives because one of us will be crowned champion. The closer you get to the final day, you, know, you do want it more and more. I know it's going to be tough, so it's, it's the fear of the unknown, I suppose. Nervous? Yes. Well, everything that I do in this kitchen and everybody that works in this kitchen works to my level. And I'm hoping and expecting today that you guys can meet that. So, let's go. As soon as you walk into this restaurant, your expectation level hits the roof and our guys have to deliver complex, complex food. OK. Marcus has created a menu from which each celebrity will cook one course. Right, huh? It's an extraordinary day for them because the pressure has been piled on. They must, must, must perform. Liz is making the starter, a twist on a British classic, Plowman's Platter. Liz's story is incredible, from novice to two-star Michelin kitchen. It consists of a roasted vine tomato soup with focaccia bread, tureen of foie gras with onion and tomato marmalade, and a comfy duck rillette. I'm trying to take it all in, to be honest. It looks so hard. Mark is in charge of the main course, assiette of rabbit. An assiette of rabbit, a plate of rabbit. Rabbit tortellini, a stuffed loin, a stuffed leg, a rabbit jus. This will be served with braised turnip and trompette mushrooms and celeriac puree. Don't know where to start. <laughs> My head's gone. I'm a little bit daunted by the whole thing. Oi, oi, oi. Read it and do it. 150 grams of egg whites. Andy is making the dessert of afternoon tea. As well as a baked egg custard tart with honey poached plums, he will serve vanilla marshmallows, chocolate dipped meringues, and scones with homemade jam. He's just doing afternoon tea. No, 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 no. Not just afternoon tea. Every tiny thing, absolutely perfect. We know his technique is brilliant, but is he going to do it on time? It's a really complicated menu, but it's, it's ridiculous. This is, I've never seen anything like this, so it's going to be tough. Liz's first job is to roast the vine tomatoes for her soup. 
day, the pressure is really on her because she kicks off the whole show. If I'm nervous for anybody, I'm especially nervous for Liz. Next, Liz prepares her terrine. After adding Madeira, she must push the foie gras through a fine sieve for the perfect consistency. I'm really expecting these guys to hit the mark. Nothing's ever left my kitchen below par. The foie gras terrine goes into the fridge, but Liz won't know if it's set until service. It's my foie gras. Oh. Meanwhile, before Mark can even start cooking, he has to bone the rabbit, as every part of it will be used. This is going to test Mark to the absolute limit. Never in my entire life have I butchered a rabbit. I have now, more or less. It was one of the most technical parts of the recipe. Now it's about getting your ass into gear and start cooking. And Mark. No pressure. You're going to have to attack it. Yes, chef. Andy begins by making meringues. After whipping the mix to perfection, he must pipe it with precision. Why are you doing that size? But I didn't know how to make the base bigger. You know, if you were working in my kitchen, I'd be upset that you've got the size differently. Yeah, wipe, 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 wipe them all off. Okay. And they stop, 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 stop. The kitchen, we don't throw anything away. While Andy masters his meringues, Liz discovers there's a problem with the tomatoes for her soup. Ow. What, what do you think you should do with that? Burnt things that make things taste really bitter. OK. So what I would do is just pick out the nice ones mm. and use those, and then we just discard the rest. OK. As Liz rescues her burnt tomatoes, Mark starts on the pasta for his braised rabbit tortellini. You need to get pure in them, then. And then you've got to get your stuffy rabbit. You've still got quite a lot of work to do here, Mark. Right, Chef. <sighs> on the other side of the kitchen, Andy rolls out the pastry for his custard tart. It's vital the custard doesn't leak out of the pastry cases once they're baked. In the worst case scenario, I've got two. I think a lot of people take an egg custard tart for granted. It's a very difficult thing to get right. Very difficult. 35 degrees. 35 minutes in the oven, bam, next. In the restaurant, final preparations are made for the chef's arrival. We've got one hour to go, and Liz kicks the whole of this thing off. Oh, I don't know about them, but I am very, very nervous indeed. Are you aware of your time? No. One hour? Left. You're due to serve at one o'clock. OK, thank you. All right. Um, yes. <laughs> Stressed, well behind time. Stressed, I want to cry. Totally want to cry. Liz's soup is well on the way, but time's running out and she's only just started her focaccia bread. I'm a bit worried about my, my bread. Um, I don't think I'm going to be ready in time. I'm real, really worried. She might be worried, but Andy's working methodically. Andy, how you doing? Okay, on the timeline, yeah. we are now... We've got the... Plums are boiling to make the jam. Great. The tart cases are into the oven. Good. The meringues are baking. Right now. Um, and the next thing after that will be to start the scones. You're going to need time at the end to make it look absolutely stunning. Time you've got to start to pick up the pace. Right, lovely. The scones are underway, and with the pastry cases baked, it's time to pour in the custard. Yeah, got a huge leak on the back one. Okay, is it going to leak onto the front one? 
Yes. Yes? Yes. Right, we need to take some uh, action then. That one's got a leak in it. This one hasn't. Okay, we need I only need one, so I need to just stop that one touching that one. So I just need to think of a, a wall to stop that liquid running that way. What you need to do is, is, is make your decision. Yeah. But you have to be quick, get your nutmeg on, get the door closed and stop yeah. it. Right. He's given the impression he's in control. Looking at what he's actually doing and how he's working, I'm not too sure whether he actually really is in control. And his scones have not turned out as expected. I've had a catastrophe with my scones, to be honest. They're not the way I want them to be. You know, it's one of those things. You either serve it or you don't. Your choice. Are they expecting but, them? Yeah, they're on your menu. Oh, uh, are they? The choice is yours. It's just overworked them. The whole thing's just died. It's not fluffy, it's not light. It's up to Andy now whether or not he serves the substandard scone or he wants to uh, knock it on the head. I'm not going to make a decision about the scones until I have to make a decision about the scones. <sighs> Mark's celeriac puree isn't going to plan either. How you doing, Mark? The consistency of this puree is still too thick to go through the chinois, so... OK, so what's, what do you do? I'm going to have to put it back in the blender or put, add milk to it or cream. What's, what's, what, what would you do? What, what would I do? I would, I would use milk or cream for thinning out. This is massive pressure again today. You've got Michelin starred chefs. I'm working with one. You know, it's just, it's hard. The chefs are about to arrive, and Liz is falling behind. Liz, you need to be getting this in the oven, OK? Her bread is going to be in the oven for at least 10 minutes. So she's quite clearly very much behind. I'm not going to be ready in time, not at all. In the dining room, five of the greatest chefs of their generation arrive. Michelle Rue Jr. Philip Howard. John Campbell. Richard Corrigan. And Atul Kutcher. The chefs are all sat down. They're waiting. Service is imminent, but Liz's focaccia is still in the oven. OK, so listen, I think, I think it'll be a good idea if you just go out there. Liz? Yeah. Hello, Liz. Go out there, okay. tell them not to worry. Okay. Come. Where are they? In the restaurant. Trust me, you won't miss them. I'm a little bit behind and I'm hoping to get it to you in about five minutes, if you don't mind. OK, thank okay. you very much. To add to the pressure, she's about to discover if her foie gras terrine has successfully set. Remember, you're serving to the Michelin star chefs out there. This is it. Liz, we need to really... We need to start speeding up now. Liz can't delay any longer. If her bread's not baked, she'll have to leave it. That's it. Take it out. Yep. Bread's looking good. She's come out. She's, she's pulled it back. She's doing well. Not bad. Um, service, please. Thank you. Uh, that was horrible. I completely and utterly want to cry. Oh, my God, that is so, so stressful. Will Liz's ploughman's platter of foie gras terrine and onion marmalade, duck riette, focaccia bread and roasted vine tomato soup have been worth the wait? Posh ploughman's. I'm yeah. starving.
actually quite like the soup. It's really oh, yeah. nice. Mm. It's nice from a little strip flavour. Tangy. The rillette's nice as well. Mm. Yeah. I'd be very impressed yeah. if she's done all of this. Yeah, I'd be yeah. very impressed. In fact, I'll be offering her a job. Hello, gentlemen. I just came up to ask if, if it was satisfactory to what you would expect. What you've done today is very good. Thank you. Very good indeed. We all enjoyed it, and I must say I thought the presentation was, uh, was really spot on. I, no, I thought it was, it was delicious. Oh, it thank you so great. much. For them to say that to me, for them to say that to me. She's done absolutely well. She's done incredibly well, in fact, to be honest with you. And from somebody that had nothing four, five, six weeks ago to what she can do today, come on, guys, you've got to take your half to that. I think that's fabulous. I can't believe it. Honestly, you absolutely <laughs> It's Mark's turn to serve. But attempts to rescue the puree haven't gone to plan. Well, it was celeriac puree. It's now celeriac soup. <laughs> I thought that was being very conservative, going with the milk and the cream, but obviously not. It's your call. Well, whether to actually use it. Well, I'm not going to use it, chef. So, that's the end of that. Right. You need to get a crack on, Mark. I think you, okay. need, you, need, you need to really just see what you've got here. And let's yep. do the best of what we've got, because those guys out there aren't going to hang around. OK. Do you know what? Stick it up, you I'm not doing it. Where's he gone? Mark. <clears throat> He's done a runner. Was that the main course? What? Tell me we're not going to get a main course. <laughs> You haven't seen a chef come running out of here about a minute ago. Yeah. Which way did he go? Which way left or right? Oh, he literally just ran past me. I'm really, really annoyed. I want to find him. I want to know where he is. He's got a meal to deliver. Sorry, I ruined your meal, but... Do me a favour. <clears throat> I get up Saturday morning. I just want my main course, then you can walk out, yeah? How did he get back in? <laughs> He's back. He's talking to the chefs. OK. Sorry, guys, I apologise, but... I felt frustrated, and... Look, I've just flipped. I apologise to everybody for flipping, but... I... <laughs> the pressure has just got to me big time today. Yeah, but listen... Don't blame me. No, I'm not blaming you per se. You know you're in a restaurant that is of this. You know these guys are what they are. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in there and I'm going to cook these guys some rabbit. Mm -hmm. And if you want to join me, come and join me. Okay. I would love you to come and join well, I'll me. Come and join you. Let's go. Do you know what, Mark? Yes, Chef. You're not the first, and you'll never, ever be the last. I'm sure. First of all, yeah. you won't forget it. B, it'll make you a stronger person. And C, Mark, Mark. You've got to go out and win it. Because now, if you give up, mate... I'm not giving up. You're not. You're back. That's the most important. But you, now you've got to get it right when it comes to putting it out on the plate. I know. I'm really sorry. Taking take in the ingredients you've got. The main course is well overdue. It's now up to Mark to turn things around. We have the makings of a good dish, and we haven't done anything different than you had, that, that, when you left the kitchen. No. It's 
you know what that is? That's a work of art. It's lovely. The celeriac puree is salvaged and will be served as a soup. That lot are going to be happy. Standard service. That's Wait. it. It's your dish. Bye. Well done. Thank you. Sorry, mate. Don't worry. Mark's leg and loin of rabbit with rabbit tortellini, braised turnip and trompet mushrooms arrives at the table. But the jus is missing, and it's now served with a celeriac soup. But, I mean, that looks, that looks lovely. Mm. I can't help but think, well, what was the drama about? Yeah. yeah one, because he made the tortellini. Yeah. He, he did the butchery. I'll tell you what, they're going to be eating well out there. They've got great food, and you can't knock a chef that delivers great food. Loins, absolutely spot on for me. It's on the button, mm. and you can overcook rabbit. Mm. Is it me? But what is this? No idea. No idea. It doesn't say anything mm -hmm. on the menu. See you in a bit, babe. <sighs> well, well, well. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I apologise, but today was a nightmare. So, I mean, I've drafted all day. I haven't stopped, and I've worked to the best of my ability. I've invested so much time and effort and energy and love. That explains your passion and we respect you for that. But, you know, the truth is, you do still have to serve the diners. And no, I know, I accept that. Thank yeah, God you actually went back in the kitchen. I know, though, I know. Because that's, that's, I know, I know. Was that was important. <laughs> it was a bit bizarre. We couldn't work it, we couldn't work it out. It was meant to be a puree. Um, ah, right. Ah, ah, that's it. Yeah. Right. That explains. Yeah. Poor old boy. I don't think whatever... I say will sum up the level of pressure, intensity, heat, exhaustion, concentration, uh, emotional, just, it's just, it's physically and mentally one of the hardest things I've ever done. Mark cracked. He got to the stage of no return and his only answer was to run and run he did. But on, on the flip side of that, this could be the point he needed to get to, to wake him up, to know that when he goes into the final, He's got to deliver the goods. Last to serve is Andy, and he's come up with an idea to save his substandard scones. I've made a decision about the scones, and I'm going to serve them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these in half and fill them with clotted cream and jam already, so that when they go to the table, they're already made as a scone, and you can just take two bites and eat and it's done. Love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Come up with an ingenious plan. Well, Piers. Puddings are all about precision and looking amazing. So I've got to make sure mine are spot on. Andy's backup tart is ruined. But until the second tart is cut, he won't know if the custard inside has set. He has just one chance to get this right. Straight down. No, it's wobbling Don't worry, much. just slowly, just do it slowly. Straight down. That's it, all the way down. So it hits the board. Start getting a little bit anxious out there. And pull the knife slowly to you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hey! hey. Bravo! Make it look pretty. Service! Just be careful. At every stage, you just go, wow. And if you asked me uh, when we started, I would never have said I could have done all of those things. I'm so over the moon. I really am. Finally, Andy serves afternoon tea of baked egg custard tart with honey poached plums, vanilla marshmallows, chocolate dipped meringues, and scones with homemade jam. Beautiful. Oh, I think he's done well on the tart. 
really yeah. well. I mean, there is so much scope for disaster there. There are bits of this that you just can't fault. They're absolutely spot on. It's fantastic. Try a scone mm. as well. Mm. Mm. He's done all right here. Of course, and there's the right balance. There's the right amount of cream and jam oh, in there. So that's... It's just perfect. Did he make all this? I mean, are we sure he made this? Sorry. Apparently, he's <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Everything that you have given us on this course was mind blowing. What really did it for me was the tart. I would have been very proud and very happy to serve that at Le Gavroche. So well done. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Thank you. And pastry is a technical skill, and if you get one thing wrong, it all is wrong. And here is very good. Everything is consistent. Thank you very much. The cream and the jam saves your scone, let's be honest with you. OK. Yeah, you can't get away with it. It's <laughs> <strong>. <laughs> but you know what? You've turned a negative into a positive. Hats off to you. Well done. Superb. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well done. Thank, well you done. So thank, thank you so much. Take care of you. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, result! Result! I can't believe it! I can't believe it! I have never ever seen a round like that. The levels of stress were incredible. What do we say about Mark? Because all through the competition, we see him every so often just crack under that pressure. It was immense for me. It was just. Really, really difficult. And I responded by my head coming off. But, you know, that's me. That's who I am. But maybe he won't let the emotion take over too much and he will go back to that man who really loves food and produce great food for us in the final. Liz, for me, has really put herself in the driving seat of this competition. I can't believe I couldn't cook and now I'm doing stuff like this. Oh, thank you. Thank you, gents. Thank you so much. <laughs> Liz did herself proud today. She produced really, really good food. Andy has always been technically brilliant, and today he was there in the pastry section doing the thing he loves. And technical and dessert go hand in hand, and he did very, very well. Let's just remember that. It's just unbelievable. <sighs> it's enough to make me cry, but I'm not going to cry unless I win. But then I'll be in floods. <laughs> I've got a win. They have now experienced two star Michelin food, and the final is just around the corner. Right now, it's anybody's race. Anybody's. Next time, it's the final judgment. And now, Celebrity MasterChef champion, 